In this video, we're going to take a look at the intersection of straight lines and circles. Now, this is something that you should be familiar with from GCSE maths and A-level maths when we're taking a look at quadratic simultaneous equations. Because the idea there was is that we had the equation of a straight line, usually the equation of a circle, and we were just checking for the points of intersection. So what we'd normally get there is a straight line, let's say like this here. Um, it should be straight, it's not quite straight there, but you get the idea. And we would have two points of intersection. So we'd have a point here, that's one point of intersection, and we'd have this point here. Okay. Now, in A level maths and in this video, what we're looking at here is where we might only have one point of intersection or no points of intersection. Okay. So if we only have one point of intersection, what we'd have there is a tangent. So let's just say something like this. I know this isn't perfect. Um, but I am doing it freehand, so you'll have to just excuse it. It might look something like that. Okay, so that would be one point of intersection. And if we had no points of intersection, then we'd have a straight line here that doesn't touch the circle. Okay. Now, what we want to investigate here is how we actually show that if our circle and our straight line don't meet, how do we actually show that? Okay. Another point to consider here, so if I just clear everything that we've got on the screen, is the point of intersection between our circle here and the y-axis okay so how do we get those points and we can also look at where the circle might meet the x-axis okay like you can see in this case for this circle here this doesn't meet the x-axis um, but sometimes you might be asked to find those coordinates okay so i think that's everything that we need to get started let's take a look at some questions now so what I've got here is a circle C, which we can see the equation of here. So three parts of this, part A, part B, and part C. Now for part A and B, pretty straightforward, just a follow on from what we did in the previous video, so it shouldn't be too challenging. So to start with, let's just take a look now at finding the coordinates um, of this circle here. So because it's already in this form here, so x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared, we can easily identify the center and the radius. So for the center here, we just take a look at this form here, and we can see then for the center that our x coordinate here will be positive 3, so it's always the opposite sign, so that's x minus 3. Our center is 3 for the x coordinate, and for the y coordinate here, this would be minus 1. Okay, so minus 1 there. So that gives the coordinates of the center of the circle C. For the radius now, well, we know this is of the form um, x minus a plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. So in that case, what we can see here is r squared is equal to 28. And we just want the radius. So we just want r here. I need to take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of 28, that would give me the radius there, okay? I don't think we can simplify this any further. I don't think there's any square numbers that go into that. We just leave our radius there in that form, okay? Keep it as in exact form but we can't simplify it any further. Okay, so that's the solution to part B. And for part C here, what we're looking for is the coordinates of the points where the circle C meets the y-axis. So if we just go back and look at this diagram here, what we can see is we have generally two points of intersection, not necessarily, but generally two points of intersection, okay? And we can see that these points of intersection, so we've got this point here and this point here, these points of intersection occur when x is equal to zero, okay, because it lies on this line. So all I need to do now is substitute x equals zero into my equation of the circle. So I'll substitute x equals zero into, let's call this equation one there, okay, so into equation one. So in that case, we get zero minus three all squared, zero minus three all squared, plus, so that's y plus one all squared, and that's equal to 28. Okay, let's simplify this now. So zero minus three all squared, that would be nine because it's minus three squared. So we get nine plus y plus one all squared is equal to 28. So from here, what we're, what we're looking to do basically is just make y the subject. So let's get rid of this nine here on the left-hand side. So to do that, we subtract uh, nine off both sides. So on the left hand side, we get y plus 1 all squared is equal to 28 minus 9, so that gives me 19 there. 
Now again, we're just looking to make y the subject, so I want to get rid of the square here, so we're going to square root both sides. So we get y plus 1 is equal, and just be careful here, so we need both the positive and negative solution, that's the square root of 19, and therefore we just want y here, so we subtract 1 of both sides, so we get y is equal to minus 1, oops, let's try that again, so y is equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root of 19, okay, and there we have it, so that's the y coordinate, um, or the y coordinates here, where the circle C meets the y-axis, okay? If we give this as actual coordinates here, um, then we're going to get 0 and minus 1 plus the square root of 19. And we're also going to get 0 and uh, minus 1 minus the square root of 19, okay? Just using this here, and that gives our coordinates there, okay? So that's the solution to part C. If we take a look at the second question here, what I've got is the circle, which we can see the equation of here. And we're told this meets this straight line here with the equation x plus y equals 4 at two points, a and b. And I just want to find the coordinates of the points a and b. So if we're looking to find the coordinates of where these, or where this straight line here intersects with this circle, then this is just a pretty straightforward idea of what we did in quadratic simultaneous equations. All I need to do is make either x or y the subject here for this straight line and substitute that into the equation of our circle. So it doesn't matter whether you make x or y the subject here, I'm just going to make y the subject, so that's 4 uh, minus x there. And what I want to do now is substitute this into the equation of our circle. We get x minus 1 all squared um, plus y squared. So that's 4 minus x all squared. 4 minus x all squared, um, and that's equal to 9. Okay, so I've got x minus 1 all squared plus y squared is equal to 9. So let's expand um, this x minus 1 squared first. So I'm going to get x squared. I'd get minus x and another minus x, so that's minus 2x. And then minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1. So that's x minus 1 squared expanded there. Do the same now for 4 minus x, so that's going to give me a positive 16. I'm going to get minus 4x and then another minus 4x. Let me just double check that. So 4 minus x, 4 minus x. So just so I'm not doing it off the top of my head. Uh, 16 minus 4x and then another minus 4x. So I get minus ax in total. And then finally, minus x times minus x gives me positive x squared. And this is all equal to 9, okay? So what I want to do now is simplify the left-hand side to start with. So that's going to give me 2x squared. So we get 2x squared there. I've got minus 2x minus 8x, so that's minus 10x. I've got 1 plus 16, so 1 plus 16, so that's 17. And then we need to minus this 9 as well. So I've got 17 minus 9, and that's equal to 0. And the reason we're setting this equal to 0 is because what I want to do here is... Um, Set this equal to 0 and then solve for x. So if we just simplify here one more time, we get 2x squared minus 10x, and then um, we get plus 8 there. Okay, so plus 8, and this is equal to 0. Now, because everything here is a multiple of 2, we can divide through by 2. So I get x squared minus 5x and plus 4, and this is equal to 0. From here now, what I want to do is factorize if possible, and in this case, this does actually factorize. If it didn't factorize, then we need to use quadratic formula. I'll complete the square, but we're quite lucky here because this does factorize. So, again, x at the front of both brackets here is equal to 0. So, I'm going to get minus 4 and minus 1 in this case. Okay, and what this gives me here is the 2x solution. So, we get that x is equal to 1. And we get that x is equal to 4. Okay, so not the neatest solution. Let's try that again. Uh, I don't like how messy that looks. So let's try one more time. <coughs> so x is equal to 4. <coughs> so forgive me, I'm losing my voice. Let's try and power through. So we need the y solutions here as well. So we need the respective y solutions. So to get those y solutions here, all I'm going to do is substitute these two x solutions here into this equation. Let's call that equation 1, okay? 
So when x is equal to 1, so when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 4 minus 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3, so we get that y is equal to 3. And when x is equal to 4, when x is equal to 4, we get that y is equal to 4 minus 4. And in that case, we get 0. Okay, so y is equal to 0. So when x is 1, we get that y is equal to 3. And when x is equal to 4, we get that y is equal to 0. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to the second question. And let's take a look at one more question here to finish with. So what I've got now is the equation of a straight line. And we're told that this doesn't meet the circle. Okay. Now, what I'm going to try and do here is try and substitute this equation here, like normal, into my equation of the circle. But what we want to do at some point is make use of the discriminant. Because the discriminant here will tell us how many points of intersection that we have. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, we have two points of intersection. If the discriminant is equal to zero, then we have one point of intersection. And if it's less than zero, then we don't have any points of intersection in this case. Okay. So like I said, let's just try and substitute this in like normal. So y is equal to 2x minus 5. I'm going to substitute that now into um, this equation here. So I've got x plus 2, x plus 2 all squared, plus 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5 plus 3 all squared, and that's equal to 5. Okay, so if we simplify here, this is going to be x plus 2 all squared, x plus 2 all squared, so 2x minus 5 plus 3, so that's 2x minus 2. Okay, so 2x minus 2 all squared, and that's equal to 5. Okay, so again, let's expand um, both of these separately. So for this one first, I'm going to get x squared. Um, I'm going to get 2x and another 2x, that's 4x. And then finally, 2 times 2, so that gives me 4. Here then, I've got 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared. 4x squared. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out, just so I don't make a mistake, because that's always a possibility. So 2x minus 2 again. So that's the 4x squared. 2x minus 2, so that's minus 4x, and then the same again here. So I get minus 8x in total. And finally, minus 2 times minus 2 gives me positive 4. Okay, and this is all equal to 5. So what I want to do here is simplify the left-hand side and then subtract the 5 off here on the right-hand side because what I want to do is set my quadratic equal to 0 and then make use of the discriminant. So if we simplify here, I get 5x squared. 5x squared. Um, we've got 4x minus 8x, so that would be minus 4x. I've then got 4 plus 4, so that's 8, minus the 5, so that gives me positive 3. Okay, and this is all equal to 0. Now, what I've got here is a quadratic equation that's equal to 0, and we're going to make use now of the discriminant. So just recall the discriminant here, delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. OK, in this case, A is 5, B is minus 4, and C is positive 3. So the discriminant here for our quadratic, B squared, so that's minus 4 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 5, times that by C, which is 3. So let's evaluate this now. Minus 4 squared would be positive 16, minus 4 times 5 is 20. So it'll give me 20, and then times that by 3 to get 60 there, okay? So I've got 16 minus 60, that would give me minus 44. Let's just double check that because I am awful at mental maths. So 16 minus 60, yeah, minus 44, perfect. So we get minus 44 there, and what that shows is that the discriminant here is less than zero. So minus 44 is less than zero, so therefore, um, the discriminant is less than zero. So as a result here, what this shows is that the straight line does not meet with the circle because essentially what we have is no points of intersection. So therefore, no points of intersection. So no points of intersection. 
And if I call this um, equation one, I call this equation two, then equation one and equation two don't meet. Okay. I'm just calling them equation one and equation two just to save time here. Um, but you can write the equations out if you prefer. So they don't meet. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution. So do make use of this screen. And that's the idea here. Um, you know, if there's only one point of intersection, again, we want to show that using the discriminant and that is equal to zero. Okay, if it was equal to zero, it would imply only one point of intersection. But there we have it. So that's our solution. And that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at tangent and chord properties.